Hi, I'm Elizabeth Townsend Gard um, from Just Want a Quilt, a research podcast coming out of Tulane University Law School. Today we have a video, a video, um, and we're doing a sew along, a sew along where Gigi Bai will be leading us through Jen Kingwell's The Gypsy Wife Quilt, which is awesome. Um, so these are videos that Gigi will produce um, and help us understand how to do it. And Corey Dutton, um, a law student, is going to learn to quilt. So um, it's for beginners, advanced people, even law students. Um, and it will be great. So uh, I hope this helps. So where do you find the pattern? Um, Jen Kinkwell's pattern can be found at Amazon. It's again called the Gypsy Wife Quilt. It's super popular. You can also get it at Uptown Needle and Craftworks here in New Orleans. Just um, look them up online and call them or at any quilt shop. So get the pattern and join us. Hi. Okay. So we're ready to start some paper piecing with a lot of pieces if you're ready. I mean, maybe you're not ready. I don't know. Um, the Pershing block and the Old Maid are the two this section that have a lot of pieces. Um, this one is the Pershing block I did, um, and I call it freehand, without paper piecing. And this is like cutting everything exactly as she said to cut it, doing exactly as I could, as best I could, to get um, a nine and a half inch Pershing block. So there's one. And then I did it again, paper pieced. And um, I like them both, and they were not too hard to do. It just is a matter of following the directions for doing the paper piecing and doing the other. So I'm gonna to talk to you today about paper piecing the Pershing block um, and downloading the, um, I, I sent Corey a copy of this, and it is, if you Google, Gypsy Wife Pershing um, block paper piecing. This comes up as um, a download that you can print. The key to it is you have to print it um, in 100% and then double check and make sure it's correct. And this is the way I did this. So A1 is supposed to be a three inch square. So I printed it out and measured from one angle to the other to make sure that it was three inches. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm not very good at this. But it was three inches across there. Then I took my other ruler and it's supposed to be, when we get to this, after we've added the C corners, um, C and C and C, then it should be six and a half inches. So by measuring those two points, I see that that's where I'll be. So um, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So we'll start with page one. You can cut it off if you wish using your paper scissors um, because we won't look at pieces D and E and F just yet. Now to get started, I cut everything. I put little post-its like this. This one says A. And whatever I needed to cut for A, I put next to post-it A. Okay, so I have a square that goes in the middle um, for A. And, I'm sorry. So, when we're doing paper piecing, we have a right side of our paper that we actually use to sew on, and we have a wrong side. And we start by putting our first square in the middle of our block, and we put right, I mean, wrong side to wrong side. So this is the wrong side of my square to the wrong side of my paper piecing pattern. And I put that on there, and I'm going to go ahead and pin it so that it stays in place for while I'm talking to you. The other thing we want to do for the very first piece when we're paper piecing is there's a line between A1 and E2. E2 is the color. E is the color that is in this pattern. And A is the first block we're going to use. So we're going to go A1 to 2. And that's our sew line. So on the back, we have our sew line right there, and I've marked up from there a quarter of an inch, and I drew a big line across. So I can lay this down, and now I can put my first square that's going to go for E2. If I put it right on there, like so, when I sew on that line, 
I um, am guaranteed that it's in the right place. The rest of them, when we go to do it, um, this is our starting point. So it gets us started and it gets us where we need to be to do our first sew. So I'm going to go ahead and sew that one on and maybe a couple of the other corners and I'll come back. Okay, I just thought I filmed that whole thing, but I didn't. So let's see if I can get this right this time. <clears throat> We've added to our paper pieces for our Persian block. We had our square in the middle. Here it is. And then we've done the same thing as a square and a square, but we're paper piecing it. So we're using pieces that are larger than the pieces that it would call for if we were doing it freehand. So I've sewn them on, following along the sew lines on the front, and I'm getting ready to iron my last piece on before I move on to my B pieces. So let me iron this very quickly. Okay, so I have these all in, and now I'm going to look at this side. I'll go over to my little post-it notes, and I have my B pieces here, and they're going to be lined up on the other side, but they'll be lined up perfectly to go on here so that we can sew them. Okay, to line up my B piece, let me go ahead and pin this on so that it doesn't fall while I try and show it to y'all. Okay, you'll see that my other pieces were slightly too large, but it's okay, it doesn't matter. I'm going to fold down on the first B piece that I need to do, B6. I fold it down. That gives me a little crease so I know where to put my um, piece so that I have enough seam allowance with it. You want a good quarter inch seam allowance. The other thing I do to help me, since the piece is a little bit bigger than what I'm using, I try and line up my point here. Once I trim it, it'll be all good, but that helps me just know where I am centered on the line. I hope that helps. Okay, so now we've got all our pieces pieced on, sewn on, on the sew lines from our paper piecing for the center part of this block. We still have to go back and do the flying geese little pieces, but we'll do those in a second. Now we want to square this up or cut it off on the sew line um, so we have something to attach the other pieces to. And so I'm going to cut along the dotted line around this square. And I'll give you an idea. Sorry, I need to change that blade. Okay. So now I've cut along there and I've got the bottom part and I'll cut the other sides to get each side um, cut along the dotted line because that's our sew line. I mean our um, seam allowance for later when we go to put it into another piece. So this should measure six and a half when we get finished with this piece. And then um, we'll be, sorry, okay. get a new blade for this by the time we get back for our next thing. And one more little cut here and I'll be able to show you our square. And we still have to do D mixed with some E's and then F for the corners at the very end. So there we have the oh my flower is upside down. There we go. There we have um, the beginning of our paper piecing for our Persian square. There are a lot of tutorials online that are much better than mine. Um, please go and look. People explain it. Paper piecing. They have really good things to share with you um, on the generationsquiltpatterns.com. And remember that you have to cut your pieces bigger. They have to cover this um, the area by a, a bit, more than just the quarter inch, because once you fold it and everything, you want it to be overlapping. So make sure that you cut it the, the pieces as you're piecing them bigger. Now we'll repeat this little, this is E right here, and it's going to repeat with D in the middle, um, making some extra little pieces. Here we go. Let me show you what those look like. We'll be working on these next. You're going to piece together uh, one D with two E's. 
and you do that four times, and that's what's going to make the edges of this. Then we'll add F in the corners, and we'll be done with the Persian block. Thanks. Okay, so this is what we're going to work on now, and it's the one um, that goes on here, like so. It's um, a triangle with the repeated um, pattern of the E fabric from right here to right there, and then that's the D fabric right there. So you can use um, the exact measurement for the D that she gives you in the book, but you just have to make sure you get it on there really straight so that you have the correct amount of seam allowance all the way around. So I'm placing this as carefully as I can using the dotted line and the straight line on the paper piecing side, on the sew side. So I'm going to go ahead and pin that piece on. And then I have an oversized triangle for the E piece, and I'm going to do one E. Now the way I usually do it is, at first I lay it the way it's supposed to go. So it's supposed to go right side up like so, but then you flip it so that they're right sides together and it overlaps a lot, but that's, because of the way these fit together, I err on the side of having too much, so that when I flip it, it's all um, seam allowances are covered. So I line those up, right sides together, right along the edge of that blue one, and I've got it pinned so that I can now flip it over and sew right along the sew line right there. Okay, so I'll flip it, get it into the machine, and sew right on the line. Try and have a foot that has an open toe or an open space so you can see exactly where you're going. If it has a, something in front of it, it, it'll prevent you from being able to see where you're going. And um, it's always nice to be able to see where you're going. So I'm going to pin my blue piece back down so it doesn't move. Oh. I may have run out of bobbin while we're doing that. Isn't that fun? Okay, I'll be back. Okay, so we have it placed on here. I'm going to flip it over so I can see my sew line. That's probably the biggest thing that I forget to do when I go to sew is I leave it on the upside down side. But we want to be able to see our sew line. And again, using an open foot so that we can see where we're going and what we're doing. And then we'll flip that piece up like that. And then we have to do the other side, the other triangle, and then we'll trim it up and it will be ready to go on the um, square. We do this four times. I've already done it one. I'm halfway through. Again, since I cut my um, middle square the exact measurement with the exact uh, um, seam allowance, I'm being very careful by pinning the whole time to keep it from moving. I have my other square. Uh, triangle, and again, I sorry I keep saying that. I lay it down the way it's supposed to be, then I flip it over so I can pin it and sew it right where it needs to be. So I'm lining up. This time I don't have to trim my seam allowance because the piece underneath, the dark blue piece, is exactly the right size, and the seam allowance is already accounted for, so I don't have extra of that. So it's ready to go. I flip it, put it under the machine like this so that I can sew right along that sew line for between 2D and 3E. So take it out and now I'll flip that one up. And I have my two pieces ready to be pressed and trimmed to go on my machine. My machine. On my quilt block. The Persian quilt block. Okay, so I'm on my last one of my triangles to get ready for the border around the Persian um, block. And I'm going to lay this one the way it looks like it should go. And then I just flip it over. And since it's too big, that's great, because with the triangles, it's hard to fit it just so. I line it up with my center triangle. 
because my center triangle is cut to fit with just a fourth of an inch seam allowance around, it makes it easy. That way, I line up exactly even with that. Then I'm ready to sew, and I have a fourth of an inch seam allowance right there. So I sew along the line, and I'll have my final one done. Hold on one second. I'll get that done, and then we'll see what it looks like all pressed and how to get it onto the square. I open it up. I've sewn on that side. I can now take my pin out that was holding my blue piece in place. Press that. Now you'll see on the back of, well, the front of your paper piecing, you have that dotted line. You're going to now take your ruler, lay it on here, and cut around that dotted line so that you have a piece that is all trimmed up just like this. See how they're all trimmed up? I have the last two to do here and here. So, I'll take this, put my ruler down on the dotted line, dotted line gives us our seam allowance that we're looking um, to have. That quarter inch seam allowance is right already built into this paper piece pattern for us. I'll show you. Okay. So when it's all trimmed up, you have now a quarter inch seam allowance. So when I pin this to my lock right here, I'll be able to sew along that quarter inch seam line, sew line, right there. Now when I'm ready to pin this on, I really like to look and see that I get my point to my point. So sometimes it makes it easy if I take this one and from the back side I poke through so I can see where my point is right there. Okay, so then when I go to put it on top of the block, I look for where my point is here, and I can then have those right on top of each other. There you go. So then when I sew it along there and along all the way across, um, my points when I open it up will match each other and be pointing towards each other. Okay, and that's what I was looking to have happen right there where your points are pointing right at each other. It makes me happy. I hope that happens for you. Now remember, I've already made like six of these, so not every one of them are the points exactly pointing at each other. But when it happens, it's a happy thing. Okay, so now we're ready to add our final piece to our Pershing block, and it's going to be piece F that will be sewn onto the sides um, where the triangles were. Did I just sew that to the wrong side? No, that's right. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so you're going to sew it to the 1E, 3E with C in the middle right here. And then we'll sew this one over here. Now to get it ready, again, we're paper piecing, so we're going to put wrong sides together, paper piece on one side with extra space on it that we'll trim down later. I went ahead and trimmed this to the actual seam allowance so that when I lay it down on my block, I'm able to put it right edge to edge like that. Then I'll sew on the solid line right there and then it'll flip up and be the next corner. And then I'll continue doing that on this side and this side and trim it down and we'll be finished with our Persian block and ready to go on to the Old Maid. This is Elizabeth Townsend Guard from Just Want a Quilt. You've been listening to Gigi Bai. Take us through an aspect of the Gypsy Wife Quilt by Jen Kingwell. Make sure you get the pattern. You can get the pattern at Amazon or Uptown Needle and Craft Works here in New Orleans or at your local quilt shop. Um, you need the pattern to be able to understand what's going on and then um, Gigi helps us through it. So join us. 
come play with us. Come to our Facebook group, Just Want a Quilt. Uh, go to our website and be part of our newsletter where we'll help you through the Gypsy Wife Quilt. Um, that's JustWantAQuilt.com, spelled W-A-N-N-A, Just Want a Quilt. Um, and of course, listen to our podcast. It's available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, and if you can't a chance to like it on those, it would be super awesome. 